Controversy, controversy, and more controversy. That's the word to describe the entire contest known as the Pro Core 200. It didn't really involve the championship contenders, but the national touring drivers. As Noah Gregson was victorious after NASCAR deemed a jump restart by Ryan Priest. Meanwhile, Haley Deegan cut the points lead down to a single point. Thanks to promise by Derek Cross, who ended up in the top 20. A lot went down in Sonoma Raceway, so let's cool down and let the pictures tell everything and not waste any more time with the highlights rolling right now. Haley Deegan led a stacked 32 car field to the green flag at Sonoma, but it wouldn't last at all as Xfinity Series regular Noah Gregson took the lead into the first couple of turns, but it wouldn't last at all either as Ryan Priest would eventually get by and take the race lead, and the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series Rookie of the Year contender had the early advantage. Then on lap 8, a two-car incident occurred in turn 2 when Travis Milburn and the man of the hour for all the wrong reasons, Ron Jane, had their issues. Milburn would finish 31st as Jay continued, much to the chagrin of everybody. Lap 12 will be another example of Jay's assertion, but all eyes were on Noah Gregson, who got by Priest before the caution came out. Gregson, too, was poised at bringing Jefferson Pitch Racing back to back Sonoma victory. Big time problems from Brittany Samora, who was one of the title contenders heading into Sonoma and was the first victim of the day. In a race, you cannot have a DNF. It unfortunately happened to her as her bid for Rookie of the Year honors is now in deep jeopardy after taking 29. The same fate would happen to championship leader Derek Krause, who came into the pit with the hood up. Seconds later, another aspiring title contender, Matt Levine, went into his spin. All of that meant Haley Deegan was going to be smelling roses if she had a phenomenal day. Cross would exit Sonoma with just a single point lead over Deegan after coming in 12 points ahead. On the restart, Gregson made the jump on Priest which came back to bite him as he was handed a drive through penalty for doing such a thing. He would later say it was a complete BS call and as a result, Priest led to the halfway point. Heading into lap 30, Jagger Jones was battling for position with Jim Ingram Bright and surprise, surprise, Rod J with problems. But back to the main battle, these two would have many of them, which became a focal point later on. Even if Jones had his front grill all destroyed, didn't bother him at bit. As Priest was trying to hold off his Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series rookie rival Daniel Henry, deja vu all over again for Todd Souza. Nearly in the same identical spot as a year ago, his engine expired and his day was over. Tough break after scoring a third at Colorado the race prior. A nearly scary situation happened on the racer as Dale Quarterly had some help from Jagger Jones, sending him forward and just barely made a complete stop in turn number two. That would have been ugly. Similar to what happened to Steve Park and Ken Schrader 20 years ago, immersively, it wasn't the case. Then the true giving the fans their money's worth moment unfolded on the following restart. Look at this! Noah Gregson, who restarted six, three wide, battling with Cole Custer. Sonoma winners, David Mayhew and Will Rogers, the defending winner, as he was an angry man on the mission. Gregson saw himself in fourth with his eyes on getting by Austin Dillon heading into turn seven. Didn't work out right away, but that didn't stop him making moves on the 2018 Daytona 500 champion. He got it, but a bump! Gregson goes to the grass and lost all of his positions he gained. He had to start it all over again. What do you mean start all over again? I don't care. I can get by those fools more than once. Probably what Gregson was thinking as he would get by Mayhew and Rogers a lap later. Then the very next lap, Gregson versus Dylan once more, but this time Gregson got by after a wobble from Dylan into the carousel. No doubt, Gregson was indeed the fastest car on the track up to that point. Here we go again. It's Jones versus Deegan. Deegan versus Jones. This time it has been Jones that has been the benefactor in this battle as he was the class of the field among the title contenders and for sure, Rookie of the Year honors is all but his at this point of the season. Remember, Jones' dad was the road course ace PJ Jones. Yes, he had all the genes that he needed to stay in the top 10 all day long. Fast forward to the bread and butter of the race. On the 49th lap, Lawless Allen blocking Deegan. But that backfire and pow! The heavy shot sent the race into overtime, and as a result of the impact of the tire barriers, Alan Bestwick take it away. They're going to red flag the event. 
They're going to stop the field, restart the race, and try and settle it. A red flag for the first time in this chaotic KNN West Championship trail. Allen got out of his car and he was unharmed, but a tough exit of what was an otherwise promising but positive good day. Reese and Hebrick duked it out on the restart with Hebrick taking the lead as Bill Kent had big time problems destroying the right side of his interstate battery Chevrolet. The caution would have come out yet as Hebrick went wide, hitting in the turn number seven, giving Reese a shot, but then NASCAR officials couldn't wait much longer and halted the action as a result of Kent's stationary car. He was okay. And once again, a restart was about to go down. The caution, however, came out when Priest was still the leader, meaning Hamburg had to restart his second. And what would be the final restart? Priest had a tremendous jump over Hamburg, very similar to Gregson earlier, as Krause's no good race worsened it after Paul Pedro and Shelly Jr. tangled with him in turn number two. Krause had regained all of his last back up to that point, but that didn't matter. Meanwhile, Raxon was all over the back of Hemrick's bumper and into the carousel, bumps him out of the way, but the question remained, can Gregson, whoa, Hemrick takes him back and takes second until Hemrick goes wide, P2 is Gregson, meanwhile, Cross gets turned, ah, big time trouble in turn number 10, as Carlos Vieira crushed the 51 energy car, and if you notice very quickly, the black flag came out for Priest. Wow, what a big what a mess this Pro Core 200 was. And it was finally over. The caution is out. And Jagger Jones also got turned. Big cloud of dust. He was furious. And as you would expect, I guess with the exception of Deacon, nobody was safe. Jones was flaming furious at Engelbright, letting him know how flipping frustrating he was. What is your big deal, you shithead? I'm running for a title and you ruined it! Piero was okay, but the center of attention was again the veteran and the rookie. With that being said, Reese and Gregson took the checkered flag side by side, but NASCAR handed the win to Gregson, which marked his fifth career Canon West win and burned it down, even taking a page from Elio Castroneves and Tony Stewart by being Spider Man. Two in a row for Jefferson Pitts and Sonoma, and no doubt the confidence Gregson needed considering what he's dealt with this past month. It was kind of a bull call there at the, uh, the end of the first stage, but uh, we battled back with this JPR team and never gave up. Uh, sucks about Ryan there on that last restart, but if it happens to us, it happens to him, and I'm okay with that. I hate winning one like that, but we came from the back and, uh, and got up to second I don't know how many times four or five times there on the last uh, green white checkers that I had to uh, to battle back and then they'd revert me back to fourth and I drive back up to second and it just kind of sucked but uh, overall really good uh, really good win for this Jefferson Pitts racing team Jerry Pitts Jeff Jefferson the rest of these guys they uh, they started my career in the KN series and to be able to get back here I finished second in 2016 to Chase Elliott to get it done this year it, it means uh, the world to me I I wasn't going to take anything but a win, so just very thankful for Switch, Lord ID, Superior Essex, Arai, Spy Sunglasses, everybody who makes it possible for me. Uh, we're going to go back to, uh, to race in Xfinity and hopefully get a win there. Ryan Priest was relegated to the last car on the lead lap and also the last car running in a gun-wrenching 20th place. I thought our restart was Clorox clean right there, so um, I'm really pissed off. I think uh, anytime you get a win taken away from you like that, after two and a half hours of grinding, uh, it's some B-crap. It's bull. Bull crap. After a wild and bizarre race, here are the final results. Noah Gregson was victorious. Daniel Hamrick finished second. Austin Dillon winds up at third. Cole Custer in fourth. And the former Sonoma winner, David Mayhew, rounds out the top five. Will Rogers, Jim Inglebright, Haley Deegan, Dave Smith, give a shout out to him. And Trevor Huddleston rounds out the top 10. 11 through 20 of the last cars remaining on this race. Paul Peter Channeling Jr. in 11, Matt Levine 12, Tim Spurgeon 13, Jagger Jones 14, Cody Vanderwall 15, Jack Wood 16, Takuma Koga, Rich DeLong, Derek Krauss at 19. And rounding out the top 20 was Ryan Breeze. Here are all the drivers that fell out of the race. Carlos Vieira, Bill Kent, Ron Jay, Lawless Allen, Ron Neeland, Dale Quarterly, Todd Sousa, Austin Saab, Brittany Samora, Paula Sacare, Travis Milburn, and John Wood, who did not run a single lap, wind up in last place. With that being said, after six intense rounds, here are the championship standings. Derek Krause with a one-point championship lead over Haley Deegan. 
Trevor Huddleston moves up to third with 11 points separating him and Kraus. Jagger Jones dropped the fourth, 13 behind. Matt Levine, fifth, 22 behind. And then in the bottom five, Brittany Samora is now a dismal 36 points behind. In the case of the rookie of the year battle, 23 behind Jones. Cody Vanderwall, seven. Todd Souza, eight. Takuma Kogum gains a spot on the championship trail to nine. He's three points ahead of Travis Milburn, who rounds out the top 10. Well, there you have it. That is a chaotic Sonoma race. Now that I've had a few days to digest everything that went down, as you saw on the NBCSN telecast, there were a lot of stuff solved that you didn't hear from the highlights, and also I didn't mention in my raw thoughts. The first one comes to mind is Lawless Allen's horrendous wreck. It was a pretty heavy shot. At first, I said it might have been Jim Engelbright that got into him, but no, it was... Haley Deegan finding the opening, but it didn't it didn't work all that well. Deegan ran into the back of Allen. And keep in mind that is a Bill McAnally car. The 12. That is. So that didn't that probably did not bode well. And as you hear in this very interview, this is what he had to say about the whole ordeal that took him out and what brought out the first red flag of the KN West season. Yeah, I'm okay. Uh everything's good. Um I'm not entirely sure what happened or who did it? I think it was the 19, but was we were racing through the S's or entry into the S's, and I was given plenty of room, and I don't know what happened there. She got loose or something, but ended up hitting my left rear and then turning me in, into the tire barrier. Then that whole big, big, big mess on the final restart. Let's run it down for you. From the NBCSN viewpoint, it had an extreme close-up shot of Priest before panning out. And just in the nick of seconds, you saw that commitment line. The red line means that's when you can take the command, take the green flag. Priest clearly passed Hembrick in that, and then before passed the red line. He, he's already took the jump. So no doubt in that from that image, from that viewpoint, Priest was ahead of Hembrick. When he was really not supposed to, he had to be, he had to pass the red line, and then he could start pulling away. And if you hear from Priest's interview, he was not happy at all. Not happy at all, one bit. And who can really blame him? Because that could have been a big win for him, no doubt, on a road course. Beating the likes of Gregson, who's won road races in the k and West. And almost could have won most for him if he, if he used his head a little bit better against Todd Gilliland last year at Bowman Mill. Or known as most sport, as I like to call it, not Bowman Mill or Canadian Tires. To me, it's most sport. So from that image, it is, it's pretty clear that he jumped the gun. There's no question about it. And then the whole ordeal with Jim Engelbright and Jagger Jones. To me, from that vantage point, Engelbright did nothing wrong. Unless there's something that led up to it that he was really angry about. It's probably all that beating and banging before the whole incident happened. That's my take. That's my my understanding because he might have got help from Inglebright and also he might have got help from Deegan who bumped into Ingle, who looked like almost nearly bumped Inglebright and it plowed and, and then Jones went for a full spin and created that big cloud of dust. So from that perspective, Jones had no reason to be angry with Inglebright. He didn't turn him. To that, you, you see it, he didn't turn him. Ingebrig did nothing wrong. He just lost it. Another Sunrise 4 driver was did cause an incident. And that was when Derek Krause lost it in spot in, uh, in the S's in turn 8 to 9. That one was clearly Huddleston running in the back of Krause. And that's what sent him all the way back. As if he already had a bad day enough. He They had the hood up. He lost multiple laps. Got the free pass three times. Got back on the lead lap only to be help, get helped by Paul Pedrocelli Jr. and then Trevor Huddleston runs into into him. It's just a that's just a bad race for for Cross. No doubt, one to forget. And as I'm recording this in the next episode, he'll turn it around indeed. And I'm talking about both Cross and Huddleston, but specifically Derek Cross. He turned it around big, big. It's more importantly, as the race after Douglas County is the combo race at Iowa. Stay tuned for that episode to come out to give you the full rundown and thoughts of the Clint Newell Auto Group Toyota 150. Those are what I this is what I gained from the NBCSN telecast, and I think every now and then when I find out more where I need answers, 
I'll give you give you a rundown, kind of like what I did with Irwin there, because there were a lot of questions that I needed answered for that race. That's for sure, especially the miss battle, the miss pass for the win. That what really was for the win, of course. Tanner Gray would, would, would had that a tremendous battle. You know how I went down and one day. I don't need to explain it, explain it to you. I discussed about it in many many episodes ago on the review and the follow up review. So this is really the follow up review, and those are all the thoughts that came to my mind. And that's all I get. really there to be said. Deegan got into Allen. Jones basically spun, lost control of his car going into the carousel. Engelbright had nothing to do with it. Trevor Huddleston ran to the back of Krause, so that's seems like Sunrise and Bill McEnany, like that rivalry is fueling in even more, and that's what you need in that can and West. Now, for when it comes to 2020, it'll be interesting to see those two teams battle with the likes of DGR, Venerini, to name a few. And that's the interesting question going into 2020. The big question will now be that is in the back of my mind, will Deegan save with Bill McAnally or go to Venerini in 2020? Depending on how that whole stock car invitation on the k and Pro Series system works out. There's a lot of stuff for 2020 that's still up in there. And we're far from discussing about it. But no doubt, Gregson just had the fastest car. And when I saw it at Sonoma from my vantage point on the on the media center, even in turns 11 and 12, Gregson just had the car. And that is all on the Jefferson Pits. They put a lot of time and effort to make that car work. At Sonoma. As we saw from Will Rogers who struggled. He really struggled in that Levine car. I was actually surprised he was not really a factor in this race at all. And that shows you that's a Jefferson Pitt effort. And look look at the, the dirt race in Vegas when Sheldon Creed drove it. He won. He won. That's, some, that's Levine's last win to date. And then Cody Vanderwall, which I did not mention in the highlights. He had a couple of moments. He spun... In the turn number two, kicked a large cloud of dust. He would bounce back okay, but it's, it's, again, Vanderwall can't catch a break this season. He's driving a car that's more, that's better than what he had the year before when he swept both races to Tucson. But at least he had that second place run. But that was basically given because of the wick, wicked circumstance that happened in the final lap with Deegan and Krause and also the Sunrise Force tangling behind. So no doubt, so the fortune. So no doubt, Vanderwall is looking to turn it around going into the very next race, which I'll discuss a bit more on Vanderwall because he, because I'll say it right now, he had a really good showing. He did, but again, circumstances bit him in the butt. Again, simple as that. It did. But all in all, that was a superb drive by Gregson, and no doubt, that was his best run, best run of his career. He did. He made moves that probably would have been unpopular by Austin Dillon. But then again, Austin Dillon dumped Eric Amaral on the white flag of the Daytona 500. Unwarranted, I might add, in my book. That was unwarranted. The Deegan one, there was reason behind it because Krause went full scent. Dillon had no reason. He could have waited. He could have waited. Look at what Tony Stewart and Kyle Busch in the Coke Zero 400 over a decade ago. That was okay. Dirty move, yes. But it was on the. It was coming to the line. Coming to the line. This wasn't going in the turn. Okay, I'm just going to stop talking about Austin Dillon and that Daytona run. And I know it, it still bothers me the fact that that happened at Daytona. It, it still does. But all in all, third place for Austin Dillon for Austin Dillon and Sonoma. Sonoma. So it's a good day for the regulars. No surprise. Bit disappointed on Cole Custer's performance. I thought he would have been right up there in that third Bob Brunkati car. It's just the Brunkati cars. Still need a little bit of work to do on those road courses. I know last year they didn't have the really the best showing either, including the event the, the defending champion Derek Thorne. He had his moments a year ago. Then Todd Souza, deja vu, deja vu for Todd Souza. It's literally what it was, deja vu. So and then Huddleston at the end of the day he had a really good showing. He he, he had he had a nice showing. Without without a doubt, he ended up being the best of the regulars. When it's all said and done. Consistent wise, it was Deegan and Jones. But Jones had his moment. Deegan just could not get up there. He did not have that good start. And from there, it was just it was a battle to just hang on and survive and get as many points over Kraft. And came out of Sonoma by just being one point behind. So no doubt heading into Douglas County, she would need a great run and cross to have problems. But then again, when you go to the track that Kraus dominated. A year ago, 
That's going to be tough. And then after Douglas County is again that big combo race. And those combo races, when you include the East teams like Visconti, GMS, and, and DGR, she's not showed it yet. To the point that even Travis Milburn was finished seventh at South Boston. Finished seventh at South Boston. He was the best of the West regulars. No, so anything can happen out of East. If she can polish that all those races in the East or the combo races, no doubt this championship trail will get even get will be twice as good. There's no doubt about it. If Kraus if Kraus exits Iowa with a strong result, but Deegan does it, this could be tough for Deegan to recover for the championship. No doubt. But if it's not, if but if Kraus, if Deegan isn't too far from behind Kraus on the West Championship as far as positions between them, or maybe surprise us all at Iowa. Then we're going to get something going. And that's what she needs. A really strong run in those combo races. Because she's dealing with the likes of Sam Mayer. Sam Mayer. Tanner Gray will be making a feature again in this West Coast Wednesday. It's been a while. He hasn't run many races. As a matter of fact, Tanner Gray ran at Gateway. The ARCA race won by Ty Gibbs. In that in the, in the, Joe Gibbs, in the number 18 Monster Energy car. He did not have a good showing at a gateway, a gateway, Mr. Tanner Gray. He got wrecked. He got wrecked. And when they when they replayed the race, when I was at a restaurant, when I was watching the truck race, coincidence that Natalie Decker had wrecked in turn one. She drove the 54 GDGR truck. And then on the, in the next screen, it's not, not, not that long after, they showed Tanner Gray wreck. It's like, that is a coincidence. That was definitely a coincidence. We'll see how great dust will come into Iowa. But the big picture is, of course, Douglas County. The race that Kraus won a year ago. On the next episode, I will run down what went down. Who came out on top? How did Deegan do? Did Samora pull a nice recovery on her bid for Rookie of the Year? Or did Jagger Jones finally pull it off? By the time you're watching, you already know what happened. By the time you see it, you know what went down. But no doubt, stay tuned for the next episode. And until we meet again, Noah Gregson has scored his fifth career Canon West win. What a wild, chaotic race in Sonoma. That is no doubt going to be the turning point of the championship trail for now. And I do mean for now. In the meantime, till the next episode, which will start shortly thereafter. And, and oh yeah, Raj still had issues after the race. Nothing else to say. <laughs>